My name is Kaylee Brock, and I'm a software engineering intern here at Code.org, and I'm currently studying computer science at the University of Waterloo. Anything that we build with technology is to solve a problem for people. And so if people don't want to use what you build because it doesn't look good or it's not designed to be able to be easily used, then why bother? Because they're just not going to use it. So for me, design is always an integral part of every project that I work on. The user interface of an app is what we call all the components of an app that a human can interact with. Laying out and designing what the screen looks like, deciding what kinds of things a user can do, like click a button, enter text, swipe to a different screen, all of these are aspects of user interface design. We've seen you can add elements to your app like buttons, text labels, and images with JavaScript code. But we've also seen that the process of adding elements to the screen, positioning, styling them, is a bit labor intensive and difficult to see without running the program. It also fills up your app with code that's not really related to its core functionality. Fortunately, App Lab has a feature called Design Mode, a design tool that lets you quickly and easily design your user interface. You should know that apps made in App Lab are actually web pages whose visual elements are made with HTML and CSS that are controlled by JavaScript. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and tells the browser about the main visual components of the web page. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and can control the styling of these elements like their color, position, and size. The HTML and CSS are stored for you behind the scenes by App Lab. So you can focus on the JavaScript code, which is really the brains of the app. Whether you're using commands like button, set position, or dragging and dropping a button in design mode, they're both inserting HTML and CSS into your app under the hood. Using design mode helps remove a lot of clutter from your coding workspace, allowing you to focus your coding efforts on function rather than design. Let's see more about how design mode works. In App Lab, you'll see a switch right above the app that switches the toolbox from code toolbox to the design toolbox. We call this switching into design mode. In design mode, you can drag and drop user interface components onto the screen and position them wherever you like. You can also easily resize an element on the screen by clicking and dragging the little handle on the bottom right corner. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the design workspace, where you can see all the properties you can set for the selected element, like the text of the button, position and size values, color for the background and text, the font size, and a few others. Different elements have different properties you can set. Once you've got an element on the screen, you'll need to make sure you can connect it with your code by setting the element's ID. When you set an ID in design mode, if you flip to code mode and drag an on event block, you'll see a pull down list of all the element IDs you created. If you made IDs that are descriptive and meaningful, it means it is easy to choose the ID of the element you want and add code to the event handling function. There's also a convenient way from design mode to insert an event handler in your code. In the design workspace, if you click on the events tab, you'll see one or more suggestions for typical events for this kind of element. You will see a link that says insert and show code. If you click it, it'll append an on event command to your code and set the ID of the element and event type for you. Whether you're adding an image element to your app or background images for buttons, you can enter the URL of the image you want to use. If the image is very large, you might need to set the width and height numbers so the resize handle fits in the window. Instead of entering a URL of an image, you can also click the Choose link next to the text box, which lets you upload your own image and sound files from your computer to your app. When you upload a file, it goes into a list of assets you've uploaded so far. Once it's uploaded, you can choose that file. Lastly, you should know the screen itself is an element of your app. You can set the background color or background image for the screen. The screen also has an ID and can respond to events like any other element. For example, you might want to know when your user clicked on the screen. You can also have multiple screens in your app. 
To add a screen, you can drag out a screen element or use the pull down menu just above the design area. Once you add a screen, give it a meaningful ID. You can use the pull down menu to switch between screens in design mode. But how do you write code to control which screen to show? You'll see a command in the UI controls code toolbox called set screen. Set screen will change the app to show the screen specified by the ID you give it. When you drag the set screen command out into the workspace, its ID field will show a pull down menu of all the screens you've added to your app. Now you can change the screen in response to some event. Using design mode in App Lab is your gateway to quickly and easily making nice looking apps. You can add elements to your app, upload files like images and sounds, even add multiple screens.